<laughs> so, so I'm really sorry if it's not working pretty well, but normally, normally it's live on Facebook now till 10 seconds. So hi That's everybody, it. yeah, hi everybody, uh, I'm Julian Welsh and it's the podcast number two. And this week, normally we need to uh, invite Nick and Ernie, uh, Nick Apex and Ernie Vigil, but they are uh, in Abu Dhabi and the connection sucks there. So I have another almost better option is to invite Mr. Mike Jensen. And Mike is here. <laughs> Hello, uh, everybody. Oh my God, the connection looks not so bad. You can watch on internet. Yeah, it's ah, working pretty great. well. So uh, Mike just told me he just come back from uh, the practice spot. So what is your usual practice day, buddy? Uh, what is the, 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 the five to five to ten uh, from Mr. Jensen? Is it uh, you start what 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 you do when you wake up and what you when you stop what what do you do? Mm, yeah, pff, yeah. Usually, uh, like everyone, I wake up in the morning, get my breakfast, and I. I go for some light workout. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people uh, ask me, uh, are you a professional rider or you still have a small job? Uh, I work two days a week. Okay. And what is your job? I work two days. Um, it's an, uh, like a blacksmith. Okay. <laughs> so it sucks. Kind of. So it's like, uh, if, if I remember well, you are a welder. Uh, something like that. Okay, whatever. And and then uh, you make your usual day, and the rest of the day, what do you do? Do you practicing? Do you make gym? Do you have any coach or anything? What what is your normal practice day? Mm, no, I have some. I I like gymnastics. I like a little bit of gymnastics, and after six o'clock, I have uh, my practice spot open. So okay, because usually from six to half past eight, I'll be riding. Your, your practice spot is like a, a legal spot or it's like a, a parking lot from a factory? It's a parking lot from a factory, but it's with the gate, so I just unlock it with the key and it's all good. So you can practice all night if you want? Yeah, if, <laughs> if you want, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on your crash and everything. And yeah, uh, yeah. I know everybody, uh, I will ask you more specific question because people know about everything in stunt riding almost especially our audience and yeah. uh, how, how do you practice i mean for myself for example i practice like i, I make a small warm-up and then i make like 20 times the same tricks and then i jump to another one and i make 20 times the same trick so how how do you how it work for you uh, uh my routine with, when i'm training is uh, it depends on if i'm going to a competition or not okay. if i go to the competition i have like two or three weeks where I practice like a run, so to speak. And, and if there's no competition, I will practice uh, freestyle. Like what no, comes to my No mind. rules, just practicing. Yeah. So uh, do you do you have like 25% uh, on the stoppy, 25% on the wheelie, or are you just, it's up to you? Mm -hmm. It's different. Some days in Denmark, there's a lot of rain, so yeah. <laughs> some days it's hard for stoppies, and some days it's harder for for wheelies. You know, uh, uh, I, to to avoid too many problems with noise and everything, I try to stay on the riding spot for two and a half hours, and then I go straight back home. So uh, I I try to ride one hour, a little break, one hour again. So that's like the usual way to do it. And uh, and uh, when you practice, you make like like I ask you, you make like all the time the same tricks. I mean, like ten times different, or you make like a sequence. Yeah, when I'm learning the tricks, I like to repeat them all the time, yeah. <laughs> like twenty times, like you say. And and when I got the tricks, when I know them, when I have them on lock, I I like to make sequences and combos. Okay. It's uh, it's very fun for me. I have an interesting question from Kevin. Kevin Dufour is a French rider uh, with, oh, yeah? with clean bike and he asked me... Uh, clean bike? Yeah, oh, no. it, and it's, the, and it's the, 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 the subject of his question. When do you think to prepare a really clean bike? Because with your level, you deserve a super nice bike. Oh, that's, a, that's <laughs> perfectly timed, this question. Uh, this weekend. What do you prepare? Yeah. Yeah, this weekend I got my third bike. It's uh, all 
painted in new colors and everything. So so this weekend I will take it apart and and put a nice bike back together. <laughs> so it's you st finally you stay on the FR for this year, yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah, because we discussed that in Dubai, and you already tried to to test different bike like GSXR and different bike, and finally you stay on the FR right? because you need more practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's hard to change bike in the middle of the season. You know, yep. we want to take like I want to prepare. If I change the bike, I want to have at least two bikes. Yeah, like that, that you can switch. Bam, bam. Yeah, exactly. So, so what finally is your bike? It's a GSXR. Maybe in the future. Uh, yeah. For now, uh, all next week I will go to Poland and ride with the GSXR. So I will have like one week of testing. Okay. Uh, so we will see if I like it or not. <laughs> yeah, because it's, people need to understand it's not so easy to jump from bike to bike. For easy tricks, it's okay. But to have a good yeah. routine in competition is really hard because the first month you feel really comfortable and then <laughs> you lost yep, everything. Yep. Yeah, we yeah have, I know. <laughs> yeah. This, is, this is super frustrating because you, you, you feel like you, you, yeah, you, you lost everything. All right, but... Yep, back to square one, yeah. Yeah, but sometimes it's good to going down to going up later. Yep, uh, I think you need, I just want to find the best platform to build a stunt bike on. And I I know the F4i is a really good one, but... Yeah, it was the perfect one. Some, yeah, but at some point I, I need a little bit more power. It's always the problem with this bike. It's too slow, it's too blah, blah, blah. A little bit more light? Probably, yeah, <laughs> but... Yeah, but I think it, I think yeah. If back in the day, everybody ride on this bike, it's there is a there is a, a reason. and, yep. and I, I'm not sure you need to to change it, but yeah, maybe. I think people ask you that because of your sponsor. Now sponsor like to have clean bike and uh, fresh and uh, recent bike. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah, we discussed this a lot, and we had a design for it, so it will be it will be it will be looking good. Not not racked up or so but it would be decent <laughs> yeah uh two weeks two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago you were in uh romain Gendreau house why why, why, yeah. do you, why do you went there uh we wanted to we we talked in dubai when we were there for the competition we we wanted to record some movies and have a, a little bit of training together and i would like to visit france and uh -huh. you know and see the, the general life there so yeah i i, I almost never practice at roman spot is it can you give you give give us more information is it big small uh we rode at two different spots one in the in the weekend where we could be like loud and on the limiter and uh in the days normal working days monday through friday we uh had like a big big spot and yeah. um and but we had to be a little bit quiet yeah, because Roma and you don't have the same style. So, do you find any inspiration in with Roma, or it was just for have a friends to practice? And because Roma is like really talented riders, of course. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's You're really right. entertaining to watch him ride. And uh, we wanted to, you know, see what like he wanted to get some inspiration, and so did I. So, yeah, it was perfect match. Perfect match. Yeah, we really had some good good ideas going and and made some nice yeah. nice crashes <laughs> yeah long time ago uh, somebody told me stefan told me like the, the bike of roman was crap like yours <laughs> and now it's going better but long time yeah. ago oh my god uh, roman's bike was a disaster <laughs> now he went to see his fri in the garage and it was it was uh, like mine beat up <laughs> <laughs> yeah a trash bike but in the same time, when you have this kind of bike, the good point is you can, you can crash no pro no problem at all, no problem. Yeah, it's really strong. It's really strong. Yeah, that's the problem with the the new bikes. They're made from, I don't know. Yes, just yeah. just a little bit of aluminium, not too much. And when you crash, you destroy everything. Like like you yeah. see, if you know a little bit Oga Ogawa, the Japanese guy, <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Yeah. He destroys his frame two times in one week. So this is uh. Oga style. On his 636, yeah? No, on, his, on, on the Triumph, sadly. On the Triumph, yeah. okay. He bought a new his, Triumph uh, and destroyed everything. Okay. 
It's it's kind of fragile bike, yeah. Yeah, let's say I, I was happy of that, but yeah, if you crashing too hard, it's not the F4i of a 636. It's not the same year, so a little bit less strong, but yeah. light. So you cannot have a strong bike with light lightweight. No, uh, it's it doesn't match. Yeah. Uh, I saw August bike in uh, in Romain's <laughs> house, and it was yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you need a little bit of clean. Yep. <laughs> yes, no, of course. <laughs> uh, did you make, uh, uh, we, for people who don't know, we were together in Dubai for the competition and the competition sadly was not like we expect because we had the bike super light and we yeah. just make run run. So it was a little bit uh, tricky to have a real competition. I mean, a, a fair competition. And then you went to a stunt wars in Poland. How, how was the competition? Oh um, yeah, the the competition in Poland was it was uh, well organized. It was a, a good organization, but the spot was so bad. <laughs> really, <laughs> again, you are not lucky again. with the grip. Yeah, it was a good grip, but it was like so bumpy. So no three sixty bunny up. Uh, no, oh. I made one time. <laughs> one time I made it, and my chain broke. Oh, <laughs> good one. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the 360 bunny up is the, it's a hard trick, but when you can yeah. put on, uh, on uh, in the competition, that means the spot is not so bad, because <laughs> this no. is a tricky trick. Yeah, it's need, yeah. you need speed, you need grip, you need, uh, <laughs> you need a lot of, yeah, good timing, you need a lot of stuff, but it's a fun, fun trick. Yeah. Well, what is the hardest trick you, you, you know, you, 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 it gives you so much time to, to, to make it? That you mm. understand the question? What what trick I spent the most time learning? Yeah, to be sure. For me, for example, the 360 bunny up, I spent like almost a year every day, 30 minutes to make this trick lock and I can make this trick almost all the time. So what is the what is the, the most hardest tricks? Mm. Oh, we have Romain Jandreau on the on the chat. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> not oh, I don't know that. what's the... What I made, I, I spent a lot of time with many tricks. When I learned to, to jump from sit down to high chair, I spent a lot of time practicing that. Really? <laughs> Getting my foot across the handlebar, I crashed a lot. And but. Yeah, but it's not take, uh, for example, the, do, you, do you spend more time on these tricks or on the Ben Balini tricks like uh, the unicycle? Mm, oh, yeah. Probably, yeah, the unicycle was hard to, t to take. Yeah, to control, because you control pretty well right now. You can, if, if you can put in competition, that means, like, you got good control. Yeah, at the moment I'm doing the... I want to learn this, uh, the Superman, or what is it called, like, the Tsunami, you know? Oh, the, the Tsunami, the, yeah. The Aldini trick, you know? Yeah. But, oh, shit, it's hard to get so high. Really? <laughs> it's neat, yeah. uh, oh, you need to ask Roman, because, oh, you need to ask to Ben, because... It's fun, we discussed with uh, Kevin and uh, Gigi from France. And you have almost the same style and Ben. Really, really close. You know, your, yeah. Your, yeah, your, your flow is almost the same. And you have the, you know, big energy and everything. It's all, yeah, you look like Ben, really. I look like Ben. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and you are tall, you know. Like Roman, Rafael, uh, Joyan was super short. And you are tall. Yeah, you have midget. long leg. And you have, so Ben is almost like you. He just have more hair than you. <laughs> more hair yeah the more hair his hair is like that <laughs> all right okay some big one yeah uh, what is your project for the for the next month for the next month yeah give uh, me some uh, exciting time yeah give me like exciting news for people watching us oh yeah next i will spend all weekend uh, all week uh, in poland next week and i'll come back for some shows in denmark uh, and I have a, a small project with Red Bull for... Video project? Yeah, we start to work on something like a, with, a, with a bunker. What's that, bunker? Something from Second World War. Oh, okay, bunkers. Bunkers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all small the same. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yep, uh, season is just about to start, so I, I plan on going uh, full-time in a couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Practice, practice, practice. When is the next competition? Next competition, I think. The next competition is... Uh... That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't have my calendar. Yeah, but it's not quite... Uh, because we have a French competition this week. Ah, yeah, SPI, yeah? Exactly. 
Uh -huh. But there is no foreigners, I think. Or maybe just one, one Spanish guy is coming. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going there. <laughs> okay, hope for me. Uh, you're coming? <laughs> yeah, of course. Because you are not going, I'm going. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my trick. <laughs> You're clever, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's my way. Now I'm watching. I'm watching the list, and if it's not too too hard, there is not too many top. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was it was so nice to be in Dubai and riding with all the guys. I was I was super happy about that. The, the result was good, but it's a little bit not fake because a result is a result. But yeah, competition is not. No, nobody gives two hundred percent like 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 I expect. So. No, but you won, so yeah, but it's just square. It was the same practice spot for everyone. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. If if one day you beat somebody and everybody ride at the max, yes, it, you can. You deserve the victory. Here it was like a little bit messy, sadly. Messy. Yeah, messy. <laughs> and uh, uh, you are Red Bull athlete. Aras is Red Bull athlete. Do you expect to make like some stuff together? Mm, we were supposed to meet in uh, in in Poland at the Stunt Wars. But uh, Aras had some problems coming, and so we will have a, a delay for this project. But uh -huh. at some point, we want to make something. We also wanted to do something with Chris Pfeiffer, but he's not available at the moment. So Oh, Sebastian, just uh, join us. Hello, Sebastian. <laughs> Hello, Sebastian. Yeah, we, we just say good stuff about your competition. Don't worry for that. <laughs> Only good stuff. Only good stuff. Uh, no, no, I ask you that because um, Red Bull and Monster are two huge supports for riders, especially like for us. And uh, I just asked that to know if there is like in the future, like you can organize competition with them or you can organize like event with them because they can, you know, pushing more hard than a normal person. They, they like to yeah. help their, their athlete. Yeah, I've been sp sp I spoke with... Um some big automotive motorcycle exhibition in Denmark in uh, in my city and and we wanted to make something but it will probably not be until 2019 yeah so one more year to prepare yeah yeah, yeah. cuz it's it's too late now yeah, i don't want to everything <laughs> yeah and it's good to make it good uh what i want to say yeah aras organized a competition yeah he organized stunt art is, is, it, is it a normal competition for us or is like a different one it was like a normal competition, but it was he only held it one time, okay. in 2015 or 16, I think. And you went there? Uh, yeah, I went there. Oh, it uh, was the Polish guy winning, uh, Carbonic. No, no, not not. I yeah. forget. Yeah, it was Powell and uh, Jona. And you finished and third. Third, yeah. You see that I'm almost a, a perfect interview guy. Yeah. My God, <laughs> you've done your research. Yeah, no, I, I spy you a little bit. <laughs> Stalker. Yeah, no, because we met uh, almost the first time in uh, in Stun GP back in the day, long time ago. Uh, uh, shit, my first competition. Yeah, it was not so bad because everybody was impressed by you. <laughs> your style. You look like uh, oh, what is the name of the guys? Uh, die at 27 years old and singing. Fuck, I forget the name. Whatever. The singer with long hair. Kurt Cobain. Everybody call you Kurt Cobain in French. Kurt Cobain. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. Oh, that's funny. My school teacher always called me Kurt Cobain. So, you know, you know what? That's it. And then a uh, French guy a little bit quit off the competition because Poland was a little bit far and some rules changed. And, and then I just saw you again in Dubai. So I was really impressed because your level like grows so fast. So did, did you practice? Where, where do you find the motivation to going from mid pack to the top, top, top? Mm. Why? Like one one morning you wake up and you say, okay, now I need to practice more hard and go to the top. I don't know. I just um, I just uh, if if I go for something, I want to go full. You know, I I want if I I'm I don't want to be half decent at something. I want to be really good. <laughs> yeah, you don't like second place. I don't like second place. <laughs> And I don't like third place either. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Two French guys <laughs> beat you, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, it sucks. No, it was by luck, whatever. Oh, never mind. Yeah, but never mind. it's uh, you 24, yes? Yeah, you 24. I, I turned 25 on uh, the last day in oh, Dubai. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, I forget. 
And um, oh, how many, <laughs> how many, do you, how many years? Till how many years uh, do you? We got eight years of riding now. Okay, so yeah, yeah. you start on the 50cc. Yep. And you practicing because of video on internet? Oh, can you explain a little bit why, why you start? Yeah, I I, I started. Uh... I started riding my scooter because I saw some video on YouTube and boom, I just wanted to learn how to make a wheelie. And when I turned 18, my father bought me some small motorcycle and uh, I started looking at people like uh, Julian Welsh. And, no way. And that, I don't know. think so. <laughs> yeah, true story. And uh who, yeah, was, and who I, was your first idol? I mean, like, who was the first writers you uh, you made? Oh, my God, this guy got really nice, uh, uh, you know, style and, you know, who is? Uh, the first people I saw was uh, on the on the scooter. And it was a Swedish guy called Andreas. Okay. And uh, and the French team, uh, one, one wheel one team. One wheel team, yeah. There is one guy like here in the chat named uh, Sebast uh, Stefan. Is with yeah. us, and he was part of the team. I I talked with Stefan in uh, when I was yeah, in, uh, in Ben's house. Yeah, okay. I was so surprised. I didn't know he was uh, <laughs> part of this team. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. It was like meeting one of your heroes. <laughs> so yeah, it was long time ago, a day. Yeah, long shit. Time. But I remember these videos. I had them on a disc, you know, on a on a small disc, so I could put it in my television and watch this <laughs> and. <laughs> Crazy shit! I spend a lot of time with these old videos. Yeah, and because the funny part with you is, uh, tell me if I'm not true, you practice alone. You don't have any friends. You don't have any team in the stunt riding. There's no other rider in Denmark that's besides funny. me. So. <laughs> no, that, that's funny. Why? Because normally people are motivated because they practice with friend, and one friend make one wheelie of 10 meters, and the other one when one make 15 meters, and you know everybody pushing, pushing, and you do everything by yourself. That's that's. Interesting. Mm, it gives me a good motivation to go and meet people like you. When we yeah. were in Dubai, I see you. Oh, and we, we came out pretty well. I, I think we, we are um, we're friends. To me, you're my friend, you know. So I like to spend time with my friends, and I want to bring something new every time. Uh-huh. I don't want to take the same shit every time. Yeah, of course. And... Uh... With this kind of point, you don't want to move. I mean, for example, you don't want to go to Spain or you don't want to go somewhere, like with yeah, more, with more riders. Yeah, exactly. I've been thinking about going uh, to Spain for half the year, like in the cold time, because there's a lot of uh, rainy days, snowy days, icy days. So you could you could have a lot of extra training days there, and and you can also ride with someone. Yeah. I have a lot of days where I think, oh man, I want to ride with someone. But yeah, it's more motivation, yeah. way more yeah. motivation. Yeah, so, exactly. I just looking if there is any question, because I al already uh, ask all the questions. Somebody asked me, uh, "Do you plan to come to Morocco?" And I, you need to answer. Oh. I need to answer, but I think I need an <laughs> invitation to come to Morocco. Yes. Uh, how did you feel to beat Corson at XDL? Was this like a stepping stone for you? Okay, so Sebastian asked you that. Mike, uh, how did you feel to beat Corson at the XDL? And the second one, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a big step for you to beat him? Uh, uh, me and Corson been, has been fighting with the the competitions last year the we went to more or less the same competitions and we had like a second place first place yeah battle, all -time battle. And, okay yeah and uh yeah of course i i was pleased to be the winner but he, he, I, I wanna... he won the overall uh, yeah he won overall okay. uh he was at all four rounds so he got the most points uh but yeah, he th he finished uh, third in the in the finals. But he wasn't happy about that. I can. And he had a bad crash, no? No, he had a crash in oh, California. Before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It was it was a serious one. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> it was a really good one. Yeah, because um, sadly for you, you arrived a little bit late. But long time ago, Rafael went to his DL, and the the series was really hard to catch because there is like a lot of style and a lot of good riders in USA now. Uh, 
we talked about that last time with Twite last week, and now it's a little bit more hard to to motivate people in USA to have a series and good 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 style. What, what do you think about yeah. American riders? Mm, I think I think that uh, like the 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 overall spirit of the the stunt riding scene in america is going down i see many people are going to the streets instead of going to the lot and i don't know it's like, I, Balti I like baltimore style rider. huh it's like baltimore style like a motocross guy in the street yeah exactly and many people ride fast wheelies on the highway not many people go to the stunt spot i'm a lot rider i'm not a street rider so i prefer going to to a, a closed course and, and ride there But so you never ride on the road, never. I ride on the road, but I I ride uh, I ride uh, like a normal guy. Okay, just just to move, not for fancy stuff. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not a good idea. Everyone knows who makes the tricks in Denmark, and you know I want to push yeah. push the sport in a good way. If I start to make shit on the roads, I cannot promote the sport in Denmark like I want to. Okay, because there is there is a new generation in Denmark, or not really. No. No way. No. Why? Why people are not motivated in Denmark? I don't know. I don't know. I meet a lot of people saying, "Oh, I want to get a stunt bike," and maybe they buy a bike, but they never ride this bike. So. And you cannot organize like a. How do you say that? A meeting. Yeah, I had a meeting uh, two times, and people said they were gonna come, and I I go there. It was uh, 300 kilometers away. And you were alone. I got one guy. Oh my god! It's not so bad for the tricks like that. Nobody, nobody ride on everybody. No. It was it was the really good point in France back a uh, long time ago. There is like a lot of riders, and that give motivation to a lot of people to meet, and going to compete together. And yeah, it was good to have like like you see well, today in competition all the time we moved French guy. There is like Polish guy. Like a lot of people coming. Mm -hmm. So you need to. Yeah, I would that. like. To Yeah, I would like to have that. <laughs> you need to organize this. In the future, I would like to bring some kind, like I said before, like a competition or a meeting or something to Denmark. Uh -huh. It will be good. You know? I I want to I want to visit Denmark. Yeah, you should come one day. Yeah, I just need to win a little bit of money and have a space in my schedule, <laughs> and I will bring my wife and my kid for sure. Yeah, yeah this is the problem. Yeah, and I want to come by summer because I heard in the winter it's really hot. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> for, <laughs> not good for practicing. But yeah, why not? Let's let's organize something with uh, Romain and Gigi and make a full pack and like that. We are only four riders, with you five riders in Denmark ever. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, the first big meeting of some riders. In Denmark, yeah. In Denmark. <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, your house, my house. So anytime. Yeah, same, same. Last last time, sadly, we we cannot meet. But next time, for oh, sure. Oh, I had to go back. I needed to to start the Suzuki project and take apart the second bike for the painter. And it's a lot of job. So, yeah, but I will be back in France. I I'm planning to come back in the summer, and then I will be back for West Bike Show. Yep. Okay. So all the French guys want to see you. They will see you at the West Bike Show. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Definitely. And what? What do you prepare special tricks for this kind of competition? Because it's almost one of the biggest competition in Europe. Yeah, it is. For me, this is a major competition this year. I want to make a good impact there. So I got some some new tricks coming, and I want to bring back some old school tricks. Yeah, but with your with your style. My style, of course. <laughs> the Jensen style. The Jensen, the Danish style, eh? <laughs> 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 like Kurt Cobain style. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. Uh, well, uh, that's that's my other question. Yeah, I have a bunch of questions, so I ask you. Who, who inspire you, you today? I mean, not only in stunt riding. How do you create new tricks? How do you think about new tricks? Or where you know what kind of sport do you watch? Oh, um, <laughs> I watch some. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, I watch a lot of gymnastics. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, for the ladies or for a? 
No, uh, ladies or boys, it, it doesn't matter. Gymnastics and uh, you you laughing, so I can say ballet. You know the dancing. Okay. No, it's 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 a it's a point of view. I I don't judge. It's it's interesting. No, you, should, you should try look at it. If you can take some of the moves from ballet or from gymnastics and put on a bike, it would be awesome. Uh, yeah, epic. Uh, f of course, you can like you watch uh, something like BMX or any other extreme sport, but. These are like the 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 special ones. <laughs> oh no, it's it's the first time I heard that. Normally, people told me like FMX, BMX, and uh, you know some extreme sport, but I never heard about like ballet and all. <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a good way to watch. Yeah, I w I will watch. I would watch. Yeah, you should try. You should try. There's some impressive guys. Uh, when you say, when you say ballet, it's not breakdance. It's not hip hop style. No, no, it's uh, the real ballet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Mm. Perfect. So, it is. sadly, I take thirty minutes of your life to discuss with you. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will ask. Uh, okay, ne and at the next competition, I will going a little bit more easier like that. You can catch me. It's good for you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, I will. Oh. You know what? Uh, being in Dubai was no. B? Yeah, B in Dubai. Yeah, whatever. I forget my English. B in Dubai was good motivation and now I'm back in a training. So thank you because you are part of this motivation. Yeah, and really? All, yeah, all the guys was there. Oh yeah, I, I'm back at two or three hours a day practicing because motivation okay. is back. So it's, it's hard. People need to understand practicing every day at the same tricks alone on the spot. It's fun six months and then it's become a little bit boring and you need to find motivation and Competition is a good motivation because you need to push all the time because people will catch you or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I got something when I lose my motivation or something. I like to take off some, some parts of my bike. Like, let's say tomorrow, oh, I don't want to ride. So I maybe take off my subcage. Okay. So I ride without subcage. So I, I can't make jumps to the subcage, you know. So I have to think of some other tricks. That's or take your take off your handbrake or whatever you know uh, to to make it different because you will have you will ride but you will think different. Interesting. That's that's fun. Yeah, I never I I never heard about that again. So no, I no I hope you give like good motivation and good uh, ID to people who want to practice. I will. I I'm I'm uh, I want to make. I want to push the sport as much as I can. I, I don't desire to be the best. I just want to, you know, lift up all of the scene because in my opinion, we should be like a X Games or something. It should be a, at, at a high, high level. Now, this is still a low fund uh, sport. You know, no one, we are professional riders and we are still poor as fuck. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm not in the street, but... Yeah, you are not so rich compared to FMX guy or guys like that. Yeah, for sure. No. But yeah, I think in the future it's going better, better, and there is like more and more competition, serious competition, like Czech Stand Day with Adam. There is like Sebastian pushing really hard in Dubai and in uh, UAE. Yeah. So I'm sure we will have good stuff this in the future. Should, that should be like an international standard. If if uh, if one day Czech Stand Days will be like the standard of a competition, this will be perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. really really good there. It's it's going better. I I never went to uh, uh, sadly to Czech Stand Day, but I hope it, I will go in the future. But when I see oh everything is organized, everything's become more normal. Like like all the time you said judge, all the time same kind of judgment, and riders become more uh, professional. Like yeah, they don't go to the drunk party all the Saturday night because they're riding on a Sunday, and it's become better and better. We just need to have more sponsor in the future but i think it will happen yeah when people see there's an opportunity to to make something with this sport they will act more professional yeah you know if they treat it as a hobby they will have it as a hobby you know yeah but fmx was the same like if you watch like 15 years ago with krusty demon and all that stuff it was like that and then because of red bull x fighters it's become more serious and more competition and people start like Tom Pages to pushing more hard. So. Yeah, you see people like these. This is what we need in, in our sport. Yeah. Uh, what, what? 
Okay, this is the last question because after it will be too long <laughs> and maybe you need to go rest a little bit. Uh, yeah. What is the future of the sport for you? What, what do you think? Because right now, by my, uh, by my point of view, there is not too many tricks to do. So what, what, what did you see? What, what do you expect for the future? Mm, uh, I'm not sure if, if the future is uh, competition or shows. It's hard to say, but there's like so many people making the shows. So in the future, it could be quite hard. Maybe I'm lucky because uh, I'm with Red Bull. I got the, the opportunity to make with them. So you should have like a, a individual supporter who could make your shows and my shows because um i see many people when when we go to the shows they are making one day for 500 euro or something you know it's you know sort of the the i'm not really answering the question no but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> i didn't expect this kind of stuff okay i asked you again the question what kind okay. of trick will make the future of the sport you know for example uh in fmx during like three or four years, it's become a little bit boring because backflip was the only way to make FMX. And then mm -hmm. Tom Pages arrived with like crazy whole tricks and new tricks like the bike flip, like the, the, the fair and all that stuff. So what kind of yeah. tricks will be imagined in the future or what do you think about that? You know, you understand the question now? Yeah, I understand. Um, I, I hope people will start to make some very good acros. And uh, I think many people start to go towards the, the switchback tricks and all this kind of stuff, making everything there. But I don't know. I, I, pref I still prefer the old school writing, but I, I don't know what the future will bring. It's hard to tell what, what the mind of the people will, will be. Yeah, it's, it's hard to find new because yeah. now almost, for, for me, I mean, Like almost everything is done. Like we saw a lot of uh, acro like, two years or three years ago at the Stan GP by a Polish guy. Like the mm -hmm. guys make the handstand uh, during the burn and all this kind of stuff. But now it's a little bit going more, more quiet. So it's hard to push hard. So that's why I, have, I expect to see new tricks at the West Bike Show this year. Yeah, but the West has a quite big spot, So it's a good potential to make uh, fast and wide circles. Uh-huh. I think this is also something people start to like, you know, yeah. the fast circles. It's not the small one. It's like a big circle. Exactly. It is the is the major uh, major change. Uh, it's what we discussed with Aaron. Aaron told me a long time ago, Europe make a lot of small tricks, uh, really slow, and USA make way more wide. And now we are the perfect combo. So we can going wide and small in the same time, more technical. So, yeah, I think it's really going like that too. Yeah, you see, like, also five years ago, everyone rode the bikes with the two bars in the tire. Yeah, sometimes less. Now everyone, five, six, seven bars in this tire, and yeah. automatically you will go wide. Yeah, and uh, for me, it's the good option, because it's going way more interesting. Yeah. More fast, more Speed fun. and danger yeah. will, will also make it more entertaining. Yeah, it is, this is an extreme sport, so there is extreme inside, so it's, of course. it's more dangerous, but it's more fun. It is more fun, really. <laughs> okay, dude, thank you so much. We almost uh, do 40 minute interview, so thank you so much for being my second guest. I really appreciate it. Oh, I think we could, we could talk for hours, I think. Yeah, yeah but people, we, we will lose people. That's the problem. Yeah, I think, I think. <laughs> And I need to, I, I'm a old man now. I'm 32, 33? 33? Yeah, I'm 33, so I need to sleep. Because if I don't oh, sleep crap. tomorrow morning, I will not wake up. <laughs> oh, okay grandpa <laughs> <laughs> okay dude thank you so much for everything uh, yeah thank you and see... thank you everyone for watching yeah don't don't forget I put the Mike Jensen uh, Instagram uh, just under his name so you can follow him on Instagram you can oh make your promotion that's your job Where make we can... my promotion yeah you should come to my page uh, Mike Jensen on Instagram and Mike Jensen on Facebook and follow my life um The freestyle lifestyle of Mike Jensen. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate. And uh, podcast number three arrives soon. I don't know who will be the, the guest. Uh, maybe a French guy. I don't know. Maybe. Thank you, everybody. Ciao. Thank you, Mike.
Au revoir. Au revoir. Ciao. <laughs> Is it working? Yes. Thank you, buddy. It was good. Thank you so much. It's not so easy to talk. Oh, so we're out now. Yeah, we are out. I hope. Okay. <laughs>